Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Let's remember the God of the Christian is the God of Israel. He, he used Israel to give us the scriptures. He used Israel uh, to give us the king, Jesus. He's not done working with Israel. Uh, may the God of Israel give us his ear today, no matter where we are, uh, no matter what we're doing. Uh, may we be seeking his face today. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Now there's a corporate prayer, prayer here in this psalm of uh crying out to him as Israel has gone through so many things and when they've gone through uh, tough things to turn to the Lord again and when the nation would turn to him then he would cause his face to shine upon them they would have blessing I, I hope that for our land uh, that uh, we've got a lot that a a lot of people who oppose God in our land today, but we've got a lot of people who want to follow God. So let's not get uh, discouraged. I know sometimes I might seem a little discouraged. I'm actually not that discouraged because I believe there's a lot of Christians in our land and, and we have the greatest weapon available to us in prayer. We can be praying that leaders in our country, that people who come to our country get saved and that they start to lead. Uh, what a wonderful thing it would be if we saw some of the leaders who stand so opposite to the things of God, if they would have someone witness to them and if they would get saved and how they would lead differently. We should be praying for our leaders, especially those that we dislike, that uh, on uh the opposite sides of things but we should be praying for those that we like because not even some of those that we might like in uh, our political realm of things uh possibly are even saved they just might see things uh they might have a biblical background and they might understand uh some of those things but they might not be saved verse 4 O lord god of hosts how long will thou be angry against the prayer of thy people thou feedest them with the bread of tears and giveth them tears to drink in great measure thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves and again <clears throat> This is the typical pattern of the nation of Israel, and we can kind of see it typical in our, our uh, life. They would, as a group, uh, they would come into captivity, they would come into bondage, then they would cry out to him, then he would uh, deliver them. Then over time, they would forget about those things. You know, we saw that in the psalm uh, the other day, the, that long one that we did, you know, all the things he delivered them in the exodus out of bondage of Egypt through the Red Sea. And then they would forget about those things. <clears throat> and then uh, he would have to remind them by having them being brought into bondage. Uh, Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, and thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparest room before it, and didst cost it, cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs under the sea, and her branches under the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by do pluck her? You know, they're, they're saying, why, as, as this nation... Or such a blessed nation, but but why now are we so uh, forsaken? You know, I don't think the nation of Israel today is in that position. They're, they're a pretty powerful nation, uh, but uh, and and I want them to be a blessed people. I want them to come to know the Savior. I want all mankind to come to know the Savior. I know that's not going to happen, but I want the people that I meet to hear the gospel. And I know I'm not like Paul. Paul said uh, he was guilt. He would, after he got saved, he was uh, free from the blood guilt of all men. I, I don't know that there was a better evangelist uh, aside from Christ Himself than Paul. 
that Paul, he, uh, they would chain a Roman soldier to him. And uh, many a Roman soldier, they, they couldn't escape. He had a captive audience, so he would witness to them. And many of them came to Christ as a result. You know, uh, I think maybe sometimes we need to look at that. Like the people brought into our life are like a Roman soldier that uh, has, has been brought and they're kind of trapped uh, and need to hear the gospel. Uh, so anyway, um, the boar out of the wood doth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doth devour it. You know, saying that, that the nation of Israel was was being devoured and, and torn up uh, by the world. Sometimes the Christians are, are feel like we're torn up by the world. But uh, the Bible does say, precious in the sight of the Lord are the, are the deaths of his saints, that, uh, you know, when we die, we know this, that the Lord is taking us home. So we don't have death to fear in that way as the world does. Because the world, when, when they die, that's over. And that's death and hell because uh, they're without Christ. If they're part of the world, if they're not in Christ, they're part of the world. And return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. In the vine vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch thou madest strong for thyself. Now it's interesting how they're referring themselves, you know, to this vineyard. And uh, the parable, you know, when Jesus uh, came and he talked about uh, them being, uh, you know, the ones to whom the Lord had rented his vineyard and how... Uh, the story goes, he sent a servant and they killed that servant, sent another servant, they killed him. And then the son came and they said, oh, let's kill the son and then they'll be the heirs, you know. Well, the son did come, Jesus Christ, and they rejected him, you know. Uh, but then salvation, you know, was made available to the whole world. Verse 16, it is burned with fire, it is cut down, they perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. You know, there, there hasn't been a nation like the nation of Israel that has had more persecution. You know, so many think that their group is, has had the most persecution. The nation of Israel in the Old Testament, the burning bush, is a significant picture of the nation of Israel and how they would be brought through all these trials and still yet survive because God's going to fulfill a promise to the nation of Israel that he will rule and reign uh, from Jerusalem, that nation, one day. and uh, But they've still got a ways to go before that happens. We've got a, at least a seven-year tribulation and then the start of that millennial reign. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand and upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. We're talking about uh, Jesus Christ. So we will not go back from thee, quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord, God of hosts, cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But he's waiting for people to turn to him. Waiting to, for people to repent, to have a change of mind and say, that's what I need. I need Jesus Christ. So, have you told somebody today about Jesus? Uh, you know, a lot of people have a prosperity gospel. I could see getting out of this verse a prosperity gospel. But uh, if people will turn to the Lord, he'll cause his face to shine. That doesn't mean uh, they'll have this happy, wealthy life. In fact, the Christian has promised trials, temptation, tribulation, persecution, and eternal life. So, uh, the one thing... You know, we are promised problems. In this world, we may have trouble, but we can take take heart because Jesus overcame the world. His face shining upon us is us having that great relationship with him and knowing that we're free from the guilt of sin. We're free from the bondage that uh, the world is not, that the world is on its path to hell. And we want them to see it too so that his face can shine upon them. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.